Okay, so if I'm on the option screen, um, let's say uh, I'm looking at uh, some boiler options and um, I maybe have an 80% AFUE and maybe this one has an 82% AFUE, so I've got two different designs. Um, now let's say I also want to look at um, an 81% AFUE boiler that is not in the BIOS library. What I can do is I can actually right click on this uh, side of the screen here, uh, the list of options, and you can go into the option manager. And the option manager will show all the options uh, in a given category uh, that are in BIOS. Um, and um, so you can quickly, in some categories there can be lots of options, so there's actually a little search down here. So for example, if I quickly want to just see the condensing options, I could type condensing and, and get them over there, or I could say condensing, space, oil, and filter just to see those. Um, so you can, you can quickly uh, filter if you've got a lot of options uh, in, a, in a given category. Um, there's also a column that displays whether these options are in the BIOS library or in the current project. Um, that's because BIOS allows you to have uh, temporary options that do not get saved into your library but only show up in a given project or project file. Uh, so let's say you had a very specific window that you're investigating only for one project and you didn't want to clutter up your library with it. Um, it could show up just in your project and not in your library. And conversely, uh, this is a way where you can, for example, if I were to uncheck some of these technologies uh, for this project, they would, they would get removed from this project. Um, where there may be some that by default BIOS is not including in a new project, um, and so you could check them to bring them into your project here. Um, so that's what those checkboxes are about. Uh, there's also some additional inputs. Um, uh, this series of checkboxes uh, lets you tailor what options show up by default in new projects. So if you were to uncheck some of these condensing options, Anytime you were to start a new project in BIOS, uh, you would not see those condens condensing options in the, B in the, in the uh, project. Um, and you can also specify uh, what option you want selected by default in new construction or for your uh, existing pre-retrofit home. Um, so there's a little bit of, of flexibility for you to tailor the interface um, if there's a lot of options or or the way we set it up isn't quite what you want. Um, so my use case here is that, again, I want to create a new uh, gas boiler. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on the 80% AFUE option, and I'm going, to, I'm going to say copy. I could say new, but often it's, it's much easier to find a similar option in BOPT and just modify it to what you need rather than have to, have to define all the inputs new. Um, so when I say copy, um, what it does is it shows me now it's the same option name but with a 2 after it. So I'm actually going to change the name and I'm going to make it, this is going to be my 81% AFUE option. And uh, what you can see here now are the properties that describe my option. These are actually the properties that are used for every simulation that we run in BIOS. Um, every property that, um, for every option in BIOS there's a series of properties that describe it. Um, that are used for the simulations. And so, uh, and for each of these rows for these properties, you can hover over these little question marks to get some description on what they mean. Um, so in this case, the AFUE, which is the uh, measure of efficiency for a boiler, I'm going to go ahead and change that to 0 0.81 because uh, that's the boiler that I want. Um, uh, and what I can do is there's this little nice little comparison option drop down that if I wanted to click the 80% AFUE, for example, um, it'll show me just the different inputs between those different options. So that can be just an easy way to, as you're defining an option, make sure that you know it's consistent or correctly different uh, from another option. And you can see down here, in, in certain categories, we also have different calculated values. Uh, for boilers, it's something called the heat uh, input ratio, um, and that is directly calculated based on the AFUE um, so you can see that we've got different values here because of the different uh, values that we put in for the AFUE. Um, so this is the first of two screens 
where you define an option. Um, this is related to the properties. Um, like I mentioned, you choose to make an option temporary, which means that it's not saved to your library and it will only be available in your project. Um, you can also choose to always make this option available in new projects. So uh, not only do, I, do you want this option in this project, but perhaps any new project that you create, you always want this option showing up. Um, so once you've defined your properties, click Next. And the second of the two screens is then related to costs. And it is split up into material costs and labor costs. Uh, on the material costs, uh, because we copied the previous option, we have its cost here showing up. Um, this is a dollar, uh, it's costed in terms of dollars per kV2 per hour, um, as well as a lifetime. And this is a source, like a data source, for where those numbers came from. Um, so what you could do is you could actually come in here and let's say uh, for your 81% APUE furnace, you had some source, maybe it was, uh, I don't know, Lowe's.com. Um, you come here and say your cost source is Lowe's, and maybe it actually costs uh, $22, um, and perhaps the lifetime, well, that sounds probably the same, but, um, uh, and you could even put in additional cost sources. So you could, you could say, well, not only Lowe's, but according to Home Depot, um, uh, the cost is $23. Um, so you can store multiple costs here, and then in a given analysis, you'll be able to select which one you want to use uh, for your analysis. Uh, so that's for material costs. So this is just the cost of the boiler itself. On the labor cost side, um, and this is, I should, I should mention, um, like if you created a new option, this would have been blank, and so you'd be required to put in costs on the material side. On the labor side, though, we have a lot of uh, automation that we default various labor costs. And the labor costs that show up are specific for different um, situations. So we can have costs specific for installing a boiler in the context of new construction versus installing a boiler in the context of retrofit versus removing that boiler in the context of retrofit. We're replacing one boiler with another boiler. Um, so for any one of these situations uh, for this option, so let's say, um, let's say installing the, the boiler in the context of retrofit, uh, BUP ships with some cost. So it's saying this is the fixed cost um, to replace this boiler. You could come in here and you can override it and, and put in your cost data again. Um, but BUP always will default it. Uh, default all this uh, information so that you don't have to ever come into the labor cost tab and, and put it in if you don't want to. Um, but the, the key point here, again, is that the costs we have are specific to the situation that you're in. So at this point, I've, I've uh, entered my costs. I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. Uh, so the new option shows up here at the bottom. I can actually move this option up and locate it between the 80 and the 82% uh, boiler. Uh, normally, I, could, I would click close at this point, and it would take me back to the option screen. Um, but in this specific situation, I specified two possible costs for BUP. And so what it's going to say is it's going to say, the library changes you made resulted in missing cost selections. The cost selector will now open so you can make these selections. So what happened is I created a boiler, but I entered two possible costs, and BOP doesn't know which cost to use. If you had only entered one cost, you would not see the screen and you wouldn't have to deal with this. But I want to demonstrate what happens if you do uh, want to be storing multiple uh, cost uh, data sets in BOP and, and switch between them in your analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then what's going to open is what's called the cost selector. And it's immediately going to take me to the boiler category material cost tab and say, for this option in red, I don't know what cost to use. You have to choose one. Um, and so what it's really showing you is for all of your options, it's showing the costs that are selected, and so there's only one for most of these. Um, but for the boiler I created, the cost could either be from Home Depot or from Lowe's. And all you have to do is click on what you want to use um, and then save it. And it gets saved to something called a cost group. In this case, I am 
uh, I am saving this to the default cost group. You actually have the ability to do save as and to create multiple cost groups. I'm not going to go ahead and show that. Um, but if I were to create multiple cost groups so that, let's say, I selected Home Depot as one cost group and Lowe's as the other, then on a case-by-case -case basis in this drop down here, I'd actually be able to select that cost group. Uh, looks like I already had a test cost group. Um, but uh, when you were to switch between these two different, those two different cost groups, Home Depot and Lowe, you would see that information reflected here then uh, for the cost. So that's how you would use it for your analysis. Uh, so that's everything I wanted to cover on Library Manager. It's a very flexible system for adding new options in any of these categories in BOP. Um, um, obviously, if you don't have to use it and you can use the shift options, that's great, but there are obviously situations where you may not be able to do that. Um, so we have built that in so you can expand on top of the, the library that BOP shifts with.